How accurate is the calorie burn on an Apple Watch, Garmin, Whoop, Aura Ring is a question that I've been asking myself for a long time. And today, we're gonna find out. I decided to test my calorie burn at multiple different sports laboratories with different kinds of exercises and compare it to as many wearable devices as I could. So I did three different tests. The first test was with Nikki at Elevate Performance Services, and this is kind of how I calculated it. So we kind of did a step test where it was four minutes, and then we would increase the speed, and then she gave me a chart of- If you were running any of these paces for an hour, this is the hourly burn, calorie burn. So I took four minutes, divided by 60 minutes, multiplied it by the calorie burn, for that hour and then I added that up for every single segment that we did. And I got a final number of 323.07 calories burned. On that day I was only wearing my Apple Watch and Whoop and the Apple Watch gave me 550 calories burned and the Whoop gave me 327. In this specific scenario, the Whoop was actually the closest to the actual calorie burn. Let me know if I calculated it correctly. I think in these tests, this calorie burn should be slightly a little bit higher because I started the watches and devices before, and then she probably stopped the test, and then there's a little bit of extra time and fluff on after as well. But it seems from this one, the Whoop was the closest. I did an hour and a half workout today that was 11 minute pace, and that was okay. eight miles, and it says, my I think my watch said I burned 1,100 calories. So it's yeah. overestimating. The watches usually do. <laughs> Remember, this is not science, it's for entertainment purposes only. Now what has actual science said? So there's this recent article that came out from AIM7, and there are a few key takeaways. That wearables had a 20% error rate for heart rate, caloric expenditure could have an error rate of up to 100%, which means they're totally inaccurate. And then they also had some sleep information as well, essentially saying that they're not perfect either. In this article, they mentioned the Apple Watch would miscalculate caloric expenditure up to 115%. Between a 28 and 93% overestimation of energy expenditure by these watches. They are not accurate for energy expenditure. So everyone who's calculating how much they should eat based on the caloric expenditure of their Apple Watch or any wearable, be mindful because it might not be that accurate as you think it is. People are looking at their watch going, well, burn 3000 calories today. Guess I can eat 2500 when in reality they only burn 2200. Now they're eating 2500 calories. They think they're in a deficit. Actually, they're in a surplus. When it comes to calories, fitness trackers aren't the only thing that are inaccurate. Also, the calorie labels. That's what Casey Neistat found. It took us 10 hours to test five items. Because of the discrepancies in those counts, I would have consumed an extra 548 calories. I unknowingly ate a McDonald's quarter pounder with cheese. Remember, take everything with a grain of salt or pepper, I don't know, whatever you like, dude. Already from the first test, we know that the devices were relatively off. So how did the second test go? This was with Polly at HSS, and I was doing the same exercise running. We were doing a four minute step test. I was running at a certain pace for four minutes, and then increasing that over time. So I ran the calculations the same. We did four minutes divided by 60 minutes, multiplied by the total calories burned per hour of that specific segment and pace, and then I added all of those together, which gave us a final value of 597.2 calories burned within that session. So what did my wearables say? Let's go in order from closest to farthest. Garmin at 593, Apple Watch at 636, Whoop at 430, and Aura at 739. In the first test, Whoop was the closest, but in this one, now it was the farthest one off. And Apple Watch actually had a, a better accuracy this time around. While we figure out measuring our physical health, it's important to remember about our mental health too. Most people spend hours in the gym every week, so why not give our mind the same kind of attention? Regardless if you're just going through a hard time or if you're dealing with a clinical mental health challenge, therapy can give you the tools to approach your life in a very different way. And that's why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. I know from my experience that finding a therapist can be hard and expensive. That's why I love BetterHelp's mission to make therapy more accessible and more affordable. As a millennial who runs his own business, I deal with a lot of challenges. I've been using BetterHelp on and off the past few years to help me connect with a professional therapist. It's super easy because it's all online and remote. BetterHelp has helped me change my perspective on life. I've been able to deepen my relationships with all of my friends and family. It's easy for you to sign up and get matched with a therapist within a few days. Use my link in the description, betterhelp.com backslash Shervin. Clicking the link gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp to get started on your mental fitness journey. So what are the key takeaways? I learned that depending on how you wear your Apple Watch, the type of strap you have, the weight of your Apple Watch, the generation of your Apple Watch, your skin color, hair, tattoos, the tightness of how you put the band on, how much movement you're doing during that exercise versus no movement can all have an impact on how it calculates your heart rate 
And then if it's using the heart rate to predict caloric expenditure, depending on how far the heart rate is off based on all those other factors, your caloric expenditure can be different as well. And that's where this older Stanford study on wearables might be interesting. They found there was an error rate of 40 to 80% on most devices because they're using wrist motion and heart rate to calculate most caloric expenditure. They built a device that goes on your thigh and your lower leg and they found that that was more accurate in terms of measuring caloric expenditure. You can kind of build it yourself. So if anyone knows how to, I'd love to feature that in a future video. But obviously the most accurate is wearing a mask and measuring your CO2, O2 levels. And that's been found, I think, to be the gold standard of calories burned. And if there are any new articles or new information that comes out, please comment down below. So far, I'd only done running exercises. What if we tried something different, like cycling? That's when I did my third sports lab test with Caitlin at HSS. Two minutes. We did the same thing, but on a bike. So it was a four minute step test building to increase power levels at each step. And luckily I asked her to calculate the total calories burned and she gave me 380.3 total calories in that, yeah. in that bike. I mean, yes, yes. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I don't usually do so, that. So the aura ring is close. So you know, it's a lot of addition. She also gave me a chart of calories burned per hour. At each intensity. And this is really great because we have the exact wattage and we'll have the cadence. So you'll know exactly what the, the output or the workload should be mm -hmm. to hit these numbers. And I know with cycling, there's less movement. So potentially the heart rate numbers can be more accurate with some of these devices. And I did die on the last stage. I think it only lasted like a minute and a minute and a half ish. But you know, I've, I've almost never cycled. Oh, <laughs> brutal. <laughs> We'll do these in order of closest to farthest again. Whoop on my bicep at 352 calories, Aura Ring at 320 calories, Apple Watch at 466 calories, and Garmin at 471 calories. So as a total inverse from what we got in the last lab test, the list just literally flipped itself. So now I just got even more confused. I'm like, all right, the running says one thing, the running at the other lab says another thing, the cycling, totally something different, and all these articles we're reading just say they're all way off. And I wear all four of these devices almost every single time I work out and I see how different all these calorie ranges can be. I've heard the best way to understand if you're burning as many calories as you're eating is to weigh yourself. Weigh in, first thing in the morning, or after you go to the bathroom, do it every day and take the average of that for the week and then compare that to the next week's average. And if your weight is increasing, that means you're technically eating more than you're burning. If your weight is decreasing, that means you're actually burning more than you're eating. What do you all think is more likely? That somehow you are defying the laws of thermodynamics or that maybe the instrumentation that you are using to assess energy expenditure might not be perfect. So I think the biggest takeaway is knowing that your wearable is not going to be very accurate when it comes to caloric expenditure. So if you're trying to calculate how much to eat, take that information with a grain of salt, but do not think that this is the ultimate truth of what's happening with your body. I'm gonna keep working out till the day I die, so make sure to follow me on Instagram, Strava, Twitter, at Shervin Shares. Let's be friends, let's hang out, let's talk online. Since you enjoyed this video, go watch my video where I tested the VO2 max variable of the Apple Watch versus a sports lab. It'll be linked right here.